In the top stories, man shot and killed in Bird Rock. Prime Minister Harris impresses students in the Philippines and training held for music teachers. We'll be right back with the details after this. This year, unwrap the season's best with the perfect gift from Quartz. Whether it's thrills and excitement, shiny convenience, or elegant style, we have it all at the best prices and with ready finance too. Unwrap your best gift ever, only at Quartz, bringing value home. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Jason Davis. Police are investigating a shooting in Bird Rock on Saturday night that has left a young man dead. According to, a po to police, at around 10.45 p.m., Jamal Makshin, a 33-year-old man from Keon, was shot by an unknown assailant. Police have canvassed the area of evidence. No one has been taken into custody. The investigation continues. The students and staff of Lyceum of the Philippines University have been praising Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris's recent visit to their school following his receipt of the Goosey Peace Prize for Outstanding Statesmanship. Dr. Harris accepted the highly coveted award in Manila in the Philippines. The student who chaired the forum with the Goosey, Pi Goosey Peace Prize laureates on the university's Manila campus said, quote, Today, the word honored is not enough to describe how overwhelmed we are to be graced by such outstanding people coming from various disciplines." End quote. Addressing the university students, Dr. Harris challenged them to give back to their country. He said, quote, What contributions will you as students in your country, the Philippines, make to the rest of the world? We want to encourage you to learn to give. It's not just about receiving from your teachers and from your friends and from your parents. It's about what will you give back in return. And you will begin to recognize how much more beautiful it is to give than to receive. In other news, the Ministry of Education has praised the Government of Colombia for working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to provide training for music teachers in St. Kitts over the past week. According to local coordinator for the project, Quinton Morton, two specialist consultants from the Batuta National Foundation of Colombia trained local music teachers in the art of delivery and preparing students for performances. Ramon Gonzalez and Victor Hugo Guzman, Batuta Foundation instructors, visited the site which is set aside for a school of music and a location where musical instruments will be kept. Mr. Morton said 30 teachers were engaged in the three-day training initiative on the model and methodo methodology of music for choir and assembly of musical instruments. The second phase will include the handing over of instruments funded by the Government of Colombia to the Ministry of Education. That donation is expected to be as early as December 12. Sessions will begin in January. Nevis has been put in the spotlight for its renewable energy efforts after a fitness expert recently took part in a triathlon across the island. Here's more. My name is Ross Edgley and I've come out to Nevis in the Caribbean to do a triathlon with a twist. I'm carrying a 100 pound tree. The whole reason I'm doing this is because Nevis is set to become the world's first carbon neutral island. And if a strange Englishman running around the island with a tree on his back draws attention to that fact, I will quite happily be that strange Englishman. Number 69. Hey. <laughs>
tree at one. What an incredible sight. It's our privilege, it's our honour to be here today to witness this incredible achievement. Ross Edsley with his tree. I'm going to have a word with Ross in a short while. So Ross, once you've got your breath back. Coming up, we'll have another look at some of the stories from the past week. Stay tuned. The governments of St. Kitts and Nevis and Taiwan signed an agreement covering police cooperation between the two countries as well as CCTV installation in the Federation. The signing agreement took place on Friday. My government will support to help the St. Kitts and Nevis government to install the CCTV or the video surveillance system in these countries because uh, these systems we believe will provide a very efficient um, tools for the police uh, in St. Kitts and Nevis to um, perform their functions. This substantial sum of about five million which your government has committed for the purchase of the equipment etc. required for the operation of the CCTV program is a huge and invaluable investment and it will go a long way in saving lives, in acting as a deterrent and as the Commissioner said, providing certain investigative resources that the police need at this moment. So on behalf of the country, I say thank you for this significant support, which is only phase one yes. of a series of support that we are expecting from your government. Phase one will be covering the Bastia area, Frigate Bay, and uh, its environs. And so this cost, which is about uh, five million EC dollars, is well um, needed and the support is recognized by the government and indeed by the law enforcement officials and we want to say to you that we will take advantage of this opportunity to help to build out uh, our crime fighting strategies and please take back to your government and people our sincerest thanks. An event entitled Walk in My Shoes on Wednesday morning gave volunteers a first-hand look at what it's like to live with a disability. Here's more. This unique exercise was developed to give able-bodied persons the experience of living and functioning with a disability. Among those participating in the event were parliamentarians the Honorable Eugene Hamilton and the Honorable Conris Maynard. They were blindfolded at the ferry terminal and, led by volunteers, were taken on a brief march through the streets of Bastère. Along the way, a few others joined the procession and were either blindfolded or sat in a wheelchair. The march ended outside government headquarters quarters where ZIZ News spoke with some of the volunteers about their experience. It, it takes a lot of work, a lot of thinking to manage yourself if, if you constantly have to be using a chair, a wheelchair. So, you know, kudos to those persons who have to do this on a daily basis. We see them daily and not knowing how difficult it is at time and they do it without complaining, they do it without murmuring, they do it because they live in it and um, I think us as a society in St. Gizanevis, we should be, you know, more supportive of them. Calypsonian Sylvester Socrates Hodge said as a diabetic, he's aware blindness is a possibility. So this event was especially meaningful for him. To be asked to portray a blind person, it impacted because I'm aware of it. I'm trying what they can do. But I don't live in the shoes of the folks who go to this every day. So I am this empathy and understanding as to what to go to to a certain point because I've not lived it. But for those who are afflicted by diabetes, they know they, they would have seen the demonstration and have to do all they can to avoid this and be more kind, more mindful of assisting others who are in that current situation. Opposition parliamentarian, the Honorable Conris Maynard, said functioning as a blind person was an eye-opening experience. Sometimes we sit back and we say um, that certain persons can do this and they can do that when we have never lived their situation. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about those who are blind or those who are hard of hearing or those with some other disability. Sometimes people have their own situations which um, poses particular limits on them and we must learn to appreciate that and appreciate their differences and appreciate what they have to live with. 
Minister of Social Services, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, commended the organizers on hosting the event and making a statement outside government headquarters. If there is protest, I would like to see the protest done at the seat of power. If there is petition, the petition should be done at the seat of power. So now that we are, we are showcasing uh, the, the challenges of the blind, it is good to have them finish on the, on the steps of government headquarters. It is a very uh, uh, symbolic uh, gesture to finish here. The event forms part of the week of activities organized by the Association of Persons Living with Disabilities. The goal is to raise awareness about the daily challenges that persons with disabilities face and encourage discussion on issues that affect them. Jason Davis for ZIZ News. The Federation joined the rest of the world in observing World AIDS Day on December 1. More in this report. The Ministry of Health's awareness campaign in observance of World Health Day continued on Thursday with the hosting of National Testing Day, where the public was invited to get free HIV tests using the rapid testing method. Participants were also given the opportunity to be a part of the Hands Up for Prevention selfie photo shoot, which involved writing a practical HIV prevention method on one palm, raising that hand and taking a selfie. National AIDS Program Coordinator Gardenia Distang Richardson said the event was well attended. So far we've had a steady stream of persons and people seem to be all excited about taking the selfies and uh, advocating for whatever prevention strategy that they think is appropriate for them. So we've been having a very good day today. This time Richardson said more persons in the Federation have been taking advantage of the HIV testing opportunities offered by the Ministry of Health. She said it is important for persons to get tested and know their status. You can't take your partner's word for it. You can't say, well, I did it last year, or I did it when I was pregnant, or I did it when I, when I went to donate blood. As long as you're having unprotected sex, you're putting yourself at risk of getting infected with the virus, and you really need to know your HIV status. And so we encourage persons, the only way you can know is to do the test. She said the week's activities continue tomorrow with another awareness event. We are providing rapid tests, which is the fingerprint HIV test, to individuals. And tomorrow, December 2nd, we will be at Independence Square doing another form of prevention, which is protection. And we'll be doing demonstrations, we'll be giving, doing giveaways, and we'll be encouraging persons to come and know the HIV status also. So if you missed out today on your HIV rapid test, you can come tomorrow at the square to get that done. Earlier this week, the ministry visited schools and gave lectures on the prevention strategy of abstinence and making informed choices. The theme for the 2016 World AIDS Day observance is Hands Up for HIV Prevention. Reporting for ZRIZ News, I'm Kala Berridge. Minister of State with Responsibility for Health, the Honorable Wendy Phipps, has cleared the air about the recruitment of foreign nurses, which had been a hot topic on social media and talk shows on local radio stations. In an address to the nation, Senator Phipps stated that the nurses recruited had special levels of skill not possessed by our own local nurses, and those skills are crucial in modern-day health care. All foreign nurses who have been recruited to work in our federation provide specialist skill sets currently lacking among our local nursing fraternity, especially oncology, hemodialysis, intensive care, and mental health. The recruitment of foreign nurses with specialized skill sets is meant to build capacity among our local nurses and in time have knowledge transfer so that the foreign nurses can be repatriated. She also stated that foreign recruitment was something done in the past which in the end proved beneficial to the Federation and the nurses shared information of trending medical science. It was nurse Mary Manibog from the Philippines who is no longer here with us that assisted greatly in 2012 in the establishment of the hemodialysis unit at JNF, a department that is now ably headed by a local assistant nurse manager. We anticipate similar results with the two newly recruited nurses for oncology, the newest department at JNF, for which another local nurse manager will be the head. Minister Phipps also dismissed claims that the nurses are being paid on a higher pay scheme compared to local nurses. After the break, Fidel Castro's ashes buried at a private funeral and more than 40 people killed in a warehouse fire in California. Stay tuned. Can you afford to lose everything? 
In times of uncertainty, ensure you have the security of Quartz Payment Protection. When you shop with Quartz Ready Finance Gold or Ultimate Plan, if you lose your job after six months of making payments, our redundancy coverage ensures that the payment on your account continues for up to 12 months. Don't risk losing everything. Shop with Quartz Ready Finance and get the payment protection plan that protects you against redundancy, disability, death, and loss of item due to natural disaster disaster, fire, flood, or theft. Courts Ready Finance with Payment Protection. Courts Bringing Value Home. The ashes of Cuba's former leader, Fidel Castro, have been buried at a private family funeral in Santiago, the city where his revolution began in 1959. Here's more. The last of the Cold War warriors is now in his final resting place. Accompanied by family and prominent Communist Party and government leaders, Fidel Castro was interred in a private ceremony, in the same cemetery as